And now, The Greg Gorey Show, underwritten by iHeartMedia and Woody Show Productions. Here's your host, Greg Gorey. Salutations, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Greg Gorey Show. Our staff of producers was very busy after our last show. We talked about a very serious topic, how to get stubborn wine stains out of your designer rug. And we got lots of emails. Meredith in Thousand Oaks sent a message saying, never before has my anxiety level been so heightened. Hearing about an old vine Zinfandel being carelessly dropped onto a hand-tufted Candace Olsen Tisbury indoor accent piece brought me back to the dark days when my father passed away. It was indeed a serious topic and one not to be taken lightly. Which is why today on The Greg Gorey Show, we're throwing caution to the wind. We're letting our proverbial hair down and we're throwing a party with charcuterie. Now there's no need to define a true charcuterie platter. I know, you know, heck, everyone knows that charcuterie is derived from the south of France. Char meaning flesh and cout meaning cook. And because charcutier translates directly into pork butcher, you might be fooled into thinking a charcuterie platter can only involve pork. And while yes, it generally does focus on pork, don't limit yourself. Include creative ways to incorporate poultry and beef as well. After all, a narrow-minded charcuterie platter is as boring as a Sunday brunch without a theme. It's borderline pointless. Delicate and succulent meats including, but not limited to, ham, galantines, bacon, and ballotines, not to be confused with pâté, a very common mistake made by a rookie charcuterie server. Doesn't mean you can't serve both, but don't get me wrong. I personally laugh at anyone who's masquerading as a charcuterie expert who confuses a pâté with a ballotine. I mean, really, who's in charge of whining and dining that new partner in your law firm? A nine-year-old? And don't even get me started on the vast difference between a roulade and a galantine. Even the novice home chef is well aware that a roulade gets rolled into a pinwheel shape. So now that we're all versed on the basics, let's have some fun. Let's get that platter started. Hypothetically, Joan and Winston, they're dropping by to discuss their upcoming jaunt to Bora Bora. On your embossed handwritten invitation, you've made it clear that this is a late evening get together. Therefore, dinner will not be served. Enter the charcuterie platter. So perfect for that particular occasion. Include your basics, your force meat, which is a mixture of ground and lean meats emulsified with fat. I also love to include an emulsified sausage, but make sure the texture is quite fine. Now, if you're feeling daring, the way you felt in St. Bart's when you went parasailing without a helmet, then include a fermented sausage as well. I see we have a call. Hi, you're on The Greg Gorey Show. Hi, Greg. I'm mortified to ask such a basic question, but I'd like to know what you consider a must for any charcuterie platter. I'll take your answer off the air. Thanks, Greg. Well, I hope you're sitting down because this is unconventional, but I would go with a fine German Westphalian ham. Acorn-fed pork, slow-smoked over beechwood and juniper, sliced paper thin, of course. You can easily find it at any specialty German food store. Clearly, this topic has everyone really excited because the phone lines are busier than the cashier at Restoration Hardware. Next call. Hello, and welcome to The Greg Gorey Show. Hi, Greg. I'm really excited to be on the show. I'm sure I speak for just about everyone when saying that some sort of vegetable would be perfect for a charcuterie platter. Could you address that? I'll take your answer off the air. Well, you may speak for everyone, but you speak the truth. Keep this one thing in mind when it comes to veggies, and that's pickling. Pickled cauliflower, pickled fennel, olives, and of course, pickles. And stone ground mustard nestled beside your masterpiece. Never yellow mustard. After all, we're talking about charcuterie, not a fraternity party in a garage. So there you have it, charcuterie in a nutshell. Oh, which reminds me, my friends at Epicurious recommend pistachios on your board. But full disclosure, I'm a bit miffed at Epicurious right now because they recently implied that it was perfectly fine to celebrate an anniversary dinner at a restaurant with only one Michelin star. The lesson here is, be careful what you believe. I hope you'll join us next time on The Greg Gorey Show, when topics will include greeting cards and topiaries. Until then, I'm Greg Gorey. Ciao. <laughs>